Many, many thoughts occurred to me while I played Call of Duty Infinite Warfare during the beta, and only a handful of those had to do with the game itself. As I boosted up to kill an enemy and run along a wall, I remembered all the negative comments and vitriol aimed at Treyarch for copying Infinity Ward, treating them like the inferior sibling. Half a decade later, and now I'm playing Infinity Ward's latest title with the exact same mechanics Treyarch brought to the series. It felt strange for a game made by a studio with the same logo found on the debut title's box to ooze only a drip of its own identity. To clarify, this isn't a video about deriding all of Infinite Warfare, Infinity Ward, or Call of Duty. This isn't a series I despise, and it's had many entries I hold in high regard. And the amount of negative attention Infinite Warfare received during its announcement was unnecessary. But when it comes to marketing watched by 35 million people, you're rarely going to find rational discussion. Infinite Warfare's multiplayer design in this beta had many of the same symptoms Call of Duty Ghost Campaign suffered from. I dubbed Infinity Ward's previous attempt as the first ever collage video game, because every sequence was either ripped from a previous Call of Duty game or another first-person shooter franchise. That same principle of reusing a ton of dated features from previous games with a dashing of thoroughly explored concepts was felt, as gameplay with jetpacks and wall running was mixed with levels echoing Battlefront 2's corridors. Infinity Ward isn't made up of untalented people, and especially not in the case of Infinite Warfare with developers that worked on Halo 4, The Last of Us, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. What the studio is made up of are many folks coming from very different backgrounds than those before them. As it's well documented, Infinity Ward was originally made up of 22 developers that popularized World War II shooters with Medal of Honor Allied Assault, frustrated with their publisher's restrictions and deciding to make the FPS they wanted one that wasn't about machoism, heroism, or badassery. It's why the original Call of Duty made you watch your fellow soldiers be mowed down, display an anti-war quote upon every death, and begin your first mission as a Russian soldier without a weapon to protect you. While Infinity Ward began its journey with a clear goal in mind, Treyarch had been a multi-genre studio for many years, being tasked in 2005 of bringing Call of Duty to last generation platforms then capturing the intensity of World War II and Call of Duty 3, and finally making a game that replicated Infinity Ward's fast and responsive gameplay. To keep things concise, let's establish a timeline. Infinity Ward began in 2003 with a simple design goal, to create an authentic historical-based shooter about immersing the player in a war zone. Not as a hero, just a soldier. And successfully followed up on this formula back to back. And while they abandoned World War II and Call of Duty 4, it was still very much about immersing the player in war. Treyarch spent their first game trying to convert it to last generation consoles. Building off of Big Red 1, they established Call of Duty's packed levels and dense detail in Call of Duty 3. And finally, with World at War, made a title that matched Infinity Ward's aspirations, while still having enough of Treyarch's own blood to make it stand out, from the game's brutality to its emotional campaign. But as I discussed in my channel's debuting video, Call of Duty went under a fundamental design shift with Modern Warfare 2. Gameplay mechanics tuned to making you feel like a soldier on the battlefield was now being attached to missions featuring you as a task force agent taking on entire militias by yourself. The series went from making you a vulnerable soldier to an action hero. Either from an inside scoop or coincidence, Treyarch's next game would continue this shift in core design, creating the most bombastic campaign to date and on the multiplayer side, granting players in-game currency that they could gamble. But instead of a comfortable development for Infinity Ward, the company's founders were fired by Activision, and subsequently, 46 employees, many of whom were gameplay and design leads, resigned. I highly encourage you to read Game Informer's interview with Infinity Ward's founders that delves deeper into the drama that occurred between them and Activision. Regardless, with half of Infinity Ward's staff gone, Activision quickly assembled new staff, and had their new studio, Sledgehammer Games, cancel their action-adventure title in the Call of Duty series to assist in completing Modern Warfare 3. That game, and Black Ops 2, seemed to follow Call of Duty's new style, of a twitchy, fast-paced action hero arena. Despite this inherent contradiction between mechanics and gameplay, it wasn't hurting sales, allowing the franchise to continue without much change. The timeline has now established two studios that are on the same page, having adapted to the change in mechanic usage and level design, but now that meant two studios were effectively competing against one another, and with having more in common than differences, people are going to go for the one that's more refined. Infinity Ward's effort in 2013 was Ghosts, and many of Black Ops 2's features were not outdone. 
leading to a mixed reception amongst fans and for the first time, noticeably lower sales. Not accounting for diminishing returns, Call of Duty's formula would need to be altered again, but because Ghost was already made, that meant that the shift wouldn't be started by Call of Duty's creators. Sledgehammer were the first to jump Call of Duty into a further future that resulted in alterations to the movement and core gameplay rather than just visuals or firearms. Advanced Warfare's speed and power fantasy goes even further against the grain of Call of Duty's original design, but that's not important. Call of Duty didn't alter its movement because it was needed to make the game better. It was needed in order for the franchise to remain relevant. Treyarch made their own take on Call of Duty now being a sci-fi shooter about empowerment and badassery, with a control scheme and movement that was satisfying on PC and consoles, unlike Advanced Warfare that certainly benefited from the speed and precision aided by mouse and keyboard. Bringing us back to Infinite Warfare, I can't help but shake the feeling that it's to Black Ops 3 the same way World at War was to Call of Duty 4. In 2008, Treyarch were utilizing everything done by Infinity Ward and adapting it into their World War II setting. But now the shoe is on the other foot. After Modern Warfare 3 and Ghost favored their own method for perks, streaks, and progression, now they've echoed the work done by Treyarch with wall running, thruster packs, pick 10, and their own version of specialists. Infinity Ward is what Treyarch were, slaves to an existing formula and a franchise that they must recreate and imitate for fear of upsetting its owners. But whereas Treyarch slowly grew its sphere of influence over the brand, Infinity Ward failed to convince their studio and audience that their growing influence and interpretation was necessary. Then again, between the departures of its founders, resignation of its leads, and merging with Neversoft, the only last remnant of the original Call of Duty throughout Infinite Warfare is a name on the box. I thank and welcome everyone who subscribed after my Halo 4 analysis. The years later series has far exceeded my expectations, and it's all because of viewers like you. Rest assured that my analysis of Halo 5 Guardians is being worked on and will be of the quality you've come to expect. More videos will be made, so if you have any suggestions or thoughts, leave a comment below or contact me on Twitter. I'm Racevic, and I'll see you next time.